Hello everyone, welcome to December 10th, Freight Waves Now. I'm here with our Chief Meteorologist, Nick Austin. Uh, he's gonna give us a recap on this week's big storm that hit the southeast. Uh, let us know what happened and what to expect moving forward. Nick, Yes, go ahead. winter storm Diego. Yeah. Yes, Diego. they do get named now. Not by the National Weather Service, but they are given names. Anyway, <laughs> it had a big impact on the southeast though, especially North Carolina got hit the hardest. Uh, right now, we'll just we'll show where the system's heading right now. It's still dropping a little bit of light rain and snow in the Charlotte area, but it's all kind of sinking southward. So it's going to be heading into South Carolina during uh, the evening hours, and it's going to continue to kind of fade out tonight. But North Carolina got hit the hardest as far as snow and ice, that's for sure. Some parts of Southern Virginia got a lot of snow as well. But uh, Charlotte, Raleigh, Winston-Salem, probably the biggest uh, metro areas that got really, really affected uh, greatly by the storm, especially with some of the ice preceding the snowfall. A lot of the western mountains of North Carolina had anywhere from 15 to even 18, 19 inches of snowfall uh, in a lot of the remote areas and the mountain areas. Charlotte itself at the airport had a record 2.7 inches of snow yesterday. They got a little bit more today. So uh, the previous record for yesterday's date for snowfall in Charlotte was less than a half an inch. So this is a pretty big storm. There's still gonna be problems, even though temperatures in some of these areas, especially in the cities, are getting above freezing and even in the low 40s today and will again tomorrow and Wednesday. The problem for truckers, anyone else trying to get through these areas is going to be after the snow and ice starts to melt, which it's starting to do in some areas today, that slush will refreeze on a lot of roads, possibly on some parts of the interstates, but especially on secondary routes, just off the highways, because temperatures will drop into the 20s tonight and again for tomorrow night. So in the next couple of days, there'll be a lot of problems with that refreezing on the roads during the uh, nighttime and into the early morning hours until temperatures get warmed up again during the day. So I have to really be aware of that. Um, still, there's still, hundreds more than 100,000 people I think across the tri-state region of North Carolina and Tennessee and Virginia without power uh, but there has been a lot of electricity restored just since yesterday but then they're still working on that uh, but still a lot of people without power unfortunately um, so far we know of three people that have died because of this winter storm Zach that and um, one of them was a truck driver and um, and where, where was that? That was about halfway between Boone and Greensboro, North Carolina, on Interstate 77. And uh, from the reports that I've seen, that's right, in here. that's right around in here, kind of in the northern part of the state. Here's Charlotte down here. Right. And then so it's further up north. And from the reports I've seen so far, his, his semi got stuck in the snow and ice in that area. He was trying to get it unstuck and apparently died of a heart attack. Wow. Um, doing that so and a couple other people unfortunately died I think, too. Uh, so. I think a lot of people don't realize the health concern of working even when it's that's cold. right you that, know they absolutely. get out there and they overwork they don't realize that they're exerting as much right. force right and we're, we're gonna watch one more storm particularly for uh, from Tuesday afternoon through Wednesday night and then possibly another one on Friday for the same part of the country that's gonna be up in the Northwest so especially um, along I-90 Snoqualmie Pass other parts of Interstate 90 from the Cascades all the way to the Rockies of Western Montana, um, those could that could be a problem area as well. You think it's gonna any of it's gonna come down and break off into the southeast again? I don't. I, it doesn't look like it at this point. No. Okay. It's uh, mostly gonna be up in the northwest. Yeah. So everybody's gonna be. It's is this gonna ride kind of the northern tier where they're kind of so, more prepared yeah. for it? Okay, yeah. that makes sense. The southern storms tend to uh, crank it up. So thanks, Nick. Uh, so the freight market itself has found itself kind of slowing down a little bit. Uh, we have the outbound tender rejection index weekly change map pulled up. You can still see Charlotte uh, feeling the impacts of this system. Uh, we saw a bunch of, uh, you know, carriers trying to reposition their trucks outside of the area, getting out of the way of the storm. So their tender rejection level actually went down, which is why that is red. You can see a couple of red spots up here indicating that carriers are actually rejecting less loads out of this out of these markets, indicating higher capacity. Uh, the Midwest is having a little bit of trouble finding trucks. For the moment, uh, specifically in the Rock Island, uh, Quincy, Illinois markets. Um, but the overall market itself is kind of slowly coming to uh, kind of a stable set. As we go into the end of the fourth quarter, uh, one of the things everybody's going through is bid season. They're going through their procurement cycles. Um, you know, one of our riders, JP Hampstead, has been talking to some of the analysts on what to look for in starting in 2019. And one of the things that we saw in, that we found interesting was the fact that they think that brokers are actually going to feel 
uh, less impact of this down market than carriers. Now, JP, can you tell us more about some of this? Yeah. <clears throat> so last Thursday, equities analysts from Cohen, the investment bank, released a note based on their tour of Chicago 3PLs. And they visited with senior management at Echo Global Logistics, Redwood Logistics, and Hub Group. Now, Cohen thinks that truckload prices will grow anywhere from 0% to 3% in 2019, which they think as you know, sort of barely keeping up with inflation and being overall negative for truckload carrier stocks. However, they think that if you know um, spot prices continue to deteriorate against that contract rate, that could be a positive for 3PLs that can widen their gross margins on, on the difference. But, you know, our question is, you know, our, in our view, people don't really think about contract rates in a sophisticated way. They don't understand the complex relationship between contract prices and spot prices, and they don't take into account routing guide variance. Now, if you look at this chart showing the outbound tender rejection index for the United States of America, um, you can see that very few loads are being rejected by carriers. Now, this means that shippers are able to find capacity at the top of their routing guides. They're finding the cheapest contract capacity that there is. Now, once it, you know, back in July, when you know more than 25% of all loads were being rejected, they were having to go, you know, two, three, four, five positions down in their routing guides to find a truck, which could be, you know, double the price of the first position in their routing guide. So we think that instead of comparing spot prices to average contract prices, people should be thinking about the very lowest range of contract prices, which is actually very close to spot. And we think that, you know, a kind of a 22 to 23 cent spread between average contract and spot that we see quoted all the time isn't really sustainable, that um, we think turndowns will continue to be low. We think that any, any transportation provider, whether you're a carrier or a brokerage that's trying to grow your contracted business next year, you're going to have to come in really aggressive on your prices. And I think that will further compress margins, even on the brokerage side. So essentially, you know, I had the chart pulled back out to, you know, about a year to kind of illustrate the point a little bit more. Last year was a totally different story. You see tender rejections in throughout the winter remaining high, which is unusual. It was, a, it was an anomalous year. So everybody was kind of rebidding, going through this process of elevating their contract rates. Uh, what that means is that, you know, while the contracts are in place, they're all going to the spot market to kind of make up for some of those cost differences, uh, differentials that we were seeing. Uh, right now, you can see that it has dropped off dramatically. The market has cooled significantly. And I guess carriers and brokers alike are going to feel that eventually moving into 2019. Is that right? Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, I just think that, you know, spot will eventually pull contract down with it. Um, contract isn't really contract. And, you know, there, there are scenarios where brokerages could widen their gross margins. For example, if there's a dramatic deterioration in spot that moves faster than the shippers realize. But in a slowly stabilizing, slowly cooling market, I think um, everyone's kind of going to see their, uh, their margins compressed. Cool. All right. Thanks, JP. Well, that'll do it for today. Uh, thanks and tune in every day at 4 p.m. for more Freight Waves Now. Have a good one.